The Obama administration has named dozens of so-called czars. By one count, 34 czars. There's an auto czar, an aid czar, czars for the border, czars for the economy, the Great Lakes, Guantanamo Bay, the stimulus uh, package, uh, a czar for science, technology, and terrorism, the list goes on. Congressman Jack Kingston says the White House is bypassing Congress with the appointment of all of these czars, and he wants it stopped. Congressman, good to have you with us. Well, thank you, Lou. It's good to so, be with you. So you're proposing that uh, Congress cut off the funding for these czars, correct? Yes, we are. Because the Constitutional, in the Constitution, Section 2 of Article 2, says that the President must seek the advice and consent of the U.S. Senate for his principal officers. And these are clearly principal officers. These are people who answer directly to the White House, so they get around Congress. And the reason why the Constitution put the safeguard in there is so that we'd have an opportunity to vet people and find out, well, what are their backgrounds? Well, you, you say the president is essentially forming a, a parallel government. How so? What's the relationship well, with the cabinet secretaries, for example? Well, when the president appoints a cabinet secretary, not only does the secretary have to go in front of the U.S. Senate, but also his underlings, the deputy secretaries, the undersecretaries, five down, in fact, have to do that. And that makes them accountable to the Senate for their budgets, to their philosophies and everything else, these czars don't have to go through that process. So I, as an Appropriations Committee member, never have an opportunity to talk to the energy czar, but I do the energy secretary. And yet you, you wonder, well, where does one's job begin and the other one's end? Because you, you've got two people that sound like they're doing the same kind of policy. Think, who do you think is spending more time talking with the president? The czar or the cabinet secretary? I, I think clearly the czars are really? because um, in many cases we, we know that they answer directly to the president or to his chief of staff, Rahm mm -hmm. Emanuel. We know that they do not have to come before the Congressional Appropriations Committee so they can avoid all of our nitpicking questions like to the uh, stimulus accountabilities are, why did you spend $18 million on your web page? Might be a relevant question, but we haven't had the opportunity to answer, ask it because they don't answer to us. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, as you know, past presidents have had czars. Uh, by our count, uh, these unaccountable puppet masters, as some have referred to them, here, here, here is the list. President Reagan had three of them. George Bush had one of them. Bill Clinton uh, George W. Bush, uh, George H. W. Bush had one. Uh, President Clinton had three. George W. Bush had ten. Uh, and the home run hitter here is obviously President Obama. Uh, do, is it the idea of a czar you object to, or thirty more than thirty of them that you object to? Well, I, I have to admit it's a little of both because presidents have used the title of czar for kind of special task force type people. But when you start getting 34 czars and you've only been in office eight months or seven months, it, it gets worrisome to me as a member of Congress because why do you need somebody in charge of Guantanamo Bay and the Sudan and the Middle East when you have a secretary of defense? Why do you need the Secretary of Energy if you're going to have an energy czar? And the list goes down the line like that. They're, they seem to be duplicating the existing political infrastructure for the president and the executive branch. So um, I just want to know who these people are. Why does a 31-year-old with no automobile background, for example, why is he the automobile czar? He doesn't know a, a lug nut from a spark plug. Um, why is he going to turn around Detroit when none of the GM executives were able to? Well, I think that's a, I can't wait for the answer to that question. Congressman Jack Kingston, thanks for being with us here. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Lou.